what is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video in this one we'll be doing a little overview of the brand new flight model for the su-30 mod and we'll be looking at su-30 mod on the whole uh, i'm a massive su-30 well a massive flanker fan in general and uh, i've always wished that we had a full fidelity flanker in the game we don't but we have this awesome su-30 now that does um thrust factory which is absolutely sick however I do want to point out quite a few things which are also hmm, either maybe slightly incorrect or just plain wrong and I mean absolutely no disrespect to the developers I just want the mod to be as good as it possibly can be um, so I hope they take this on board uh, for anybody that's you know watching this video um, just you know to put it out there I'm not a fighter pilot never flown an SU-30 in my life um, I do have quite a bit of experience in aviation I fly airliners I do aerobatics, I flew gliders, and I'm an aeronautical engineer as well. And I believe I have a fairly good eye for aerodynamics and the way airplanes fly, behave, fl flight control systems, things of that nature. So, um, no, I'm not a fighter pilot, but I believe that I'm, yeah, relatively qualified to judge some of the things uh, that are going on here. I'm not saying that everything I say is right, might not be. And quite frankly, I'm not going to be comparing the real numbers of this aircraft. Uh, to what it's supposed to do because I've got absolutely no idea you know I'm not here to compare EM diagrams and tell you the corner speed is correct I am here to tell you if I think it flies more or less in a believable manner so with that said uh, let's get into it we have two good engine size you're clear to disconnect the headset we'll see you on the left with the pin thanks a lot Alright, first of all, let's start with a couple of gripes I have with the SU-30 here, just visually, um, in terms of the way it's modeled. Uh, first of all, this IRST, this looks dumb. Um, it should be sitting on top of the glass, or sort of flush with the glass, but here it sort of makes a weird triangle shape and sort of cuts through the glass, it's just kind of wrong. Um, over here, I mean, this is kind of annoying because, you know, I, I, I tend to look, sort of twist my head a little bit, and my track IR sort of takes me out to the side and get to see this gap in the in the bodywork which is a little bit annoying so I really wish that they fixed that because the rest of it looks pretty decent um, I think that's one of the things that's just really letting it down the thing that it's really letting it down like I mean big time uh, which is I just can't I'm just so annoyed about if I'm honest um, it's the fact that these damn tails they're wrong uh, geometrically they're incorrect um, I, as soon as I downloaded this mod I was like Hold on a second, this looks weird. I don't remember SU-30 tails being kind of that narrow and tall. I mean, yeah, they're tall, but they're not like, surely they're not that, that the way they, they, they are here. Sure enough, absolutely right. Um, I could tell you exactly where the discrepancies are. If you have a look in the real life photos, you'll see that the tails extend way beyond the elevons. Here they don't, they extend like two millimeters. Um, and then at the, other, at the other side in the rudders, uh, you see these little extension plates that run up and down. Well, in the real life, you know, the, the plate at the bottom extends way further and then tapers in towards the top. So, actually, the, the tail sort of should be wider. And the other thing I'm pretty sure is the distance between <coughs> the top of the rudder and the painted part of the fin is uh, shorter in real life. That could be an optical illusion, but I'm fairly certain it's a little bit shorter. So, basically, we have a tail here that is longer and narrower than real life and it just looks so disproportionate I just I'm, oh God, I hate it I hate it um, <clears throat> you know once you see it you just can't unsee it it's just wrong so I hope that's something that they fix in the not too distant future uh, but with that said I think uh, let's get cracking let's start taxiing out and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about what's going on so we could go with that uh, nose wheel steering on the other thing I've noticed is uh, if you tap the brakes um, you'll see that you know, the, there's not really any movement in terms of the the nose strut. Uh, you know, it would be nice to add that as well. Um, got a little bit of an air show display going on here. And, uh, let's call it 2009. I actually watched this jet fly, you know, when I'm flying here in DCS. It's the uh, Suhoi's own test bed for the MKM uh, that they flew back in the day. And uh, this was the uh, board number 04 that they painted. There was another very similar one, which I think was an MKI. This one's an MKM for the Malaysians. 
Uh, whilst we're taxing out to the runway, I just want to point out a couple of things about thrust vectoring. Uh, for those of you that are unaware, thrust vectoring can only be used at lower speeds and more specifically below the design maneuver speed of the aircraft because that is uh, the speed regime at which you can exceed the critical angle of attack before hitting the maximum g-limit. Obviously hitting the maximum g-limit, so I mean if you're going to use thrust vectoring at, you know, let's call it 1200 kilometers an hour, uh, well it, it's not going to do anything, the jet's just going to pitch up to your know, maximum g and then after that, once it transitions at some point, maybe, to low speed, then it'll give you the thrust vectoring capability. Uh, so that's kind of an important thing to understand, is that, you know, thrust vectoring isn't going to, you know, s suddenly slam the brakes on if you're going supersonic. <clears throat> it isn't. However, having said that, it is unbelievably, unbelievably fun and unbelievably useful. So let's, uh, let's take off and explore that. I think the plan is we're going to take off here. Um, I just do some aerobatics overhead and I'll just show you, demonstrate to you what's going on. Uh, so actually I do want to point out that if we enable thrust vectoring, uh, the way they've modeled the nozzles is brilliant. It's so good. It's exactly, I think the angles are just about right um, from what I've seen in real life with these jets. It's, you know, or even on videos I guess. Um, yeah, it, feel, it looks good. Obviously it's on a V-axis um, for those of you that don't know. Now that the nose wheel steering is off, we can also go left and right uh, with the rudders, just to demonstrate. Uh, so, let's uh, let's go on the brakes, set thrust, and get cracking. All right. 120, 30, 40, and we'll start to pitch up. Gear's coming up, and we're going to do the typical, in fact, let's turn... Um, thrust vectoring off for a second. <clears throat> We're going to do a typical SU-30 demo takeoff, which is going to be something like this. And I'm just going to point out a couple of things. Now, first of all, the new flight model has changed not just the thrust vectoring, but also the non-thrust vectoring regime, I, what I'm doing now. And I have to say, it's bloody brilliant what they've done. Перегрузка предельная. Also, Rita. That's the uh, the woman. That's <coughs> by the way, hikes. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I am not feeling very well. She has to excuse my voice. Um, <coughs> yeah, Rita is great. The sounds are all there. I don't know how they got them, but that's excellent. And the way this thing flies is now actually like a flanker, uh, which is super impressive. The way they've made it. You know, the way, the way they made a handle now feels quite similar to the SU-27 in some ways and, uh, you know, it makes it quite believable. Uh, but now, I want to show you one thing that I really dislike about the flight model. Let's go... let's make this turn. Right, my hands are completely off the throttle and the stick. 100% off. Look what's happening to the nose. Basically nothing. The nose is staying steady well, dropping ever so slightly. You might be okay. You might be thinking, well, it's the you know, it's the uh, thrust vector. Sorry, the, um, the the flight control system doing that, right? No, the rudders are not deflected whatsoever, and the jet is just almost keeping that attitude, and it's nonsense. So, no airplane would do that, as far as I know, not in a knife edge. Um, and yeah, I mean, obviously, flankers can fly knife edge, no problem. But you need, you know, a fair amount of rudder input there, but in this flight model, you don't. So, <clears throat> I got a funny feeling there's something wrong there. And in fact, it's not a funny feeling. I know there's something wrong there, uh, and I don't like it. I hope they fix it. Uh, but, like I say, you know, that is maybe, you know, not a huge flaw in an otherwise what feels like a very realistic feeling system. And... Uh, the Russian hat's super useful, by the way, in so many ways. You've got the, the max G limit, or rather the Gs that you're the pulling on the top left. You've got the uh, the angle of attack, which is very, very important. And you've got the VSI there, which is quite useful as well. And of course, now you have the flight path vector, which is something that was missing in the SU-27. Right, let's transition this into thrust vectoring. So thrust vectoring is coming on. At this speed, thrust vectoring is completely pointless. Let's go above the cloud, and uh, we'll play around a little bit there, and I'll show you a couple of the demo stuff 
these jets do. Now I love how the tails vibrate there. That is awesome. I love how the wingtips vibrate. They've done a phenomenal job there. Right, 720. Actually, we can start pulling back. Now we're at the max G limit. <coughs> so we're not actually using thrust vectoring, but now we are because we're at low speed. And we'll do what's called a kulbit in Russian, which is basically this backflip thing. And holy crap, like it is fantastic how they've done it. Absolutely fantastic. And you know what I absolutely love? The transition that they've done between critical angle of attack, beyond critical angle of attack, like let's say now. If we go, I love how those wingtips vibrate, that's awesome. Um, in fact, let's let's put it into a what's in Russian called a falling like a maple leaf. So we go full rudder now. And remember, you need thrust vector for thrust vectoring to be, you know, effective. You need um, you need a lot of thrust. And this is exactly how it is in real life. It's absolutely brilliant the way they've modeled that. But what I was saying is that I absolutely love is the transition between stalled flight, where thrust vectoring is effective, and normal flight. Um, I think I don't know how they've done it, but I think that's super impressive. I actually hit 10G on that one. Перегрузка предельная. Um, and retest telling us that it's maximum G. Um, but like I was saying, it, it's absolutely phenomenal how they've done that transition and the way the whole thing vibrates and it's so smooth and kind of, you know, feels kind of like a little bit lethargic. One thing I want to try now, actually, is if we go into... Yeah, there we go. If we go into this super slow flight regime, we're a little bit fast, so we're just going to try and um, modulate the uh, throttle there. We should be super, super slow flight. There we are. <coughs> and the good thing about the HUD here is that it's giving us a VSI, so you can see if we keep the VSI on zero, it's minus one at the moment, we've got zero, then uh, we need to be level though. And about 110, 120, that's a good. That's a good speed right there, 110, 120. Pick the nose up a little bit. But it's super impressive how it does it, because, <coughs> you know, real life it does it too. And then we can just kick the rudder to uh, do a sort of wing over thing that they do as well in the air shows. And it's just, it's just crazy. This thing is so bloody forgiving. Um, you can be a very bad pilot and get away with so much bad flying. Um, which is a testament about just you know, how good it feels, how good it is. Now, the question is, you know, is it like it is in real life? Now, we're never going to know fully, but if you compare the air show maneuvers, and I will fly a full air show display in this thing, uh, just to kind of demonstrate and put them side by side, but in my opinion, in many ways, holy crap, I think it, it, it looks like exactly, and I'm genuinely surprised because I think the flight model of this thing before was arcadey to say the least. Um, you know, uh, including its ground handling. Its ground handling at the moment is still a little bit rubbish. Uh, but the, the flight model, overall, with a couple of a couple of little changes, like I say, that you know the, the nose not wanting to drop. Um, I think that would be just phenomenal if they if they uh, if they fix that. So let's come in for landing. There we go. Now here, the nose doesn't want to drop. This is very frustrating as a pilot, because why would the nose not drop? You see, I've got my hands off the stick and everything, and it's not dropping. This is so unnatural. It makes me put in um, a certain amount of rudder, which is not required uh, whatsoever. And it's just, it's just stupid. It's just so stupid. We're also a little bit fast, but that's fine. We'll bleed the energy up in time we make the touchdown. Nice greaser in here, hopefully. That's not too bad. I'll take that. Drag shoot's coming out. And there we are. So, I hope uh, you guys have enjoyed this little overview. Um, sorry about lack of editing in this one. I thought I just wanted to get a sort of quick overview of my impressions. And like I say, I'll do a proper air show display video um, with this thing versus its real counterpart just to see how it is. Uh, but you know what I can say so far? It's awesome. Really. Uh, especially if you put it into a dogfight. Um, holy crap. 
It's uh, wow. It, the whole thing, shut up, tower. Um, the whole thing just feels epic, really epic. Um, like I say, it's just a few things with flight dynamics, maybe that could be tweaked, and uh, well, these tails, so that you know, I can sleep at night. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, though, I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you have, please make sure to smash the living daylight out the like button, subscribe for future videos, and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Adios.